Well, thank you very much, our dear viewers. Today we are going to explore the role of cultural tourism in the development of Uganda. All what you need to know about cultural tourism in Uganda. First of all, you need to know what is cultural tourism. Cultural tourism is a result of the history and artifacts of a given society. This is where we have the kingdoms and the chiefdoms. Then we bring in the monuments and other historical sites. Uganda is a part of Africa. Well, it is a part of Africa because of many reasons. And one of the reasons is the culture tourism. One, I will first list for you the products, all the elements of culture tourism in Uganda, all the things which are culturally related that would attract people from all over the world to come and explore Uganda or to come and discover. What do you think something would uh, force somebody to come from a different country to come and visit Uganda? One is our, uh, the rich history which is embedded in the kingdoms. You know very well in Uganda we have the Bunyoro Kingdom, which is the oldest. Then we have a Buganda Kingdom, Toro Kingdom, Musoga Kingdom, then Obusinga Warenzururu. Then we have the chiefdoms uh, in uh, Teso, then uh, the Sebei sub region. When we come this other side of Chigezi, of course we have the Chigezi. That one is also, they are headed by the ruler. And then also we have the, the Ankole Kingdom. These ones, they have a, a lot of history related to the food. Each of these kingdoms, it's a society. They have different foods. They have the staple food of which this step of food has attracted very many people to come and explore. Like when you come to Uganda, of course you need to talk about the Matoke. When you come to Toro, you need to talk about the, the Kalo. Nandiki Kawakweta Karo Nesap. Then, when you go to, of course, Tess also you will find Atapa. He saw, he saw one of the Buddha dishes and many other foods. Then you too, you look at the dances, the cultural dances of this society because the kingdoms, all these, the societies, the, the classes, they are a sign of uh, identity. Wherefore you will find that Kiso Busoga they have Kisoga dance, which is different from the Buganda, which is uh, a Maganda. Then when you come to Toro, Inyamuziga, Nanichi and Togoro. Then when you come to Bunyoro, of course you'll find Ikinyege. Then for Obusinga, they also have their unique dance. Hmm? Of which I believe if such dances are preserved, if this kind of interaction is, is preserved, it can attract more people to come into the country. Then from there, we have the historical monuments, all the historical sites. The historical sites are very important because they signify the historical information embedded 
in any uh, artifact uh, which was put up. Like if you look at the the royal tombs of different kingdoms, like the Kasubi tombs. Kasubi tombs is one of the heritage UNESCO heritage sites and it is a, a burial site for the kings of Uganda. Eh? So it is a such a historical site. Then when you come to Bunyoro, we have the Emparo, Emparo tombs, which of course is the burial site for the Bunyoro kings. Then for Toro, we have the Karambi tombs. So and the others. They, they, they are called the Gasani, Am Amagasani. So these are the burial sites for the kings. And in the due course, these ones can be promoted to build up the tourism base for Uganda. And then you look at the buildings, the historical buildings, like the palace, the palaces. If you come to Bunyoro, you'll find there, will, there are numerous palaces which we shall be exploring in our next episodes. Then when you come to Uganda, we have Mengo, we have uh, Nisuvulange, we have uh, Banda, Bamdaneka, and many others. All these can be turned into the culture sites. Same applies to uh, Toro Kingdom. Of course, they have the Kaluzika, then they have Galhuma in uh, Mwenge, and others in um, uh, parts of uh, Karagwe. So, and also part of Mugusu in Nyangabu. I think we have also one palace of which, with them, we are going to discover and explore these palaces one by one but of course people need to know that it is very important to preserve the culture the history the rich history in uganda so that the next generation can also get a chance to learn then after learning they preserve it is not just a matter of learning but also they preserve the facts about the society. When you come to Toro, you'll find that there are norms. The Batoro have the Empako and the Banyoro. No? It, is a name, it is a name, it is a unique name given to everyone in Toro sub-region. So there is a need to preserve such rich history so that the coming generation can have a chance to explore the love embedded in such practices, the naming ceremonies when you're going to name a child, when the child is born, the rituals which are performed, eh? all these ones needs to be packaged and broadcasted, telecasted for the people to come and learn the rich history. Eh? If you go to Bama Saba, you'll find there is Embalo. Huh? Embalo, it is a very big ceremony. Yeah. So we need to learn from these other developed countries like France, the UK, America, and German, who have really preserved their, even their architecture. They have preserved their architecture. That one sends a very big signal to the tourism stakeholders in Uganda to look into the preservation of the, the, the rich cultural history. If you look at Uganda, every kingdom, every clan, they have what they call Obutaka. It is the role and responsibility of everyone to ensure that uh, the Obutaka is preserved. The clan, maybe the Inkima clan, if it is having Obutaka, then they need to go back to the Obutaka 
Abimbogo. Uh, they have their clan leader and of course this person would always guide them through Abimindi. Uh, Abimpindi. <laughs> Abimpindi. They have this. They have where they're supposed to do this. Then Abengo. Uh, so you find that there is this unique identity which was built up long time ago actually a hundred years a thousand years ago so i think there is need to preserve all these values to ensure that we can earn more in this in terms of forex people are coming in uganda we need to ensure how best can we increase or how best can we retain the forex People come to Uganda and then they end up going back with money. What are you thinking? Yet we have the rich cultural history, which these people can come and of course explore. We can have homestays, like in Fort Potro. Actually, I'm happy in Fort Potro. These homestays are being done, which is very good. Where people come, they experience the traditions. Cooking in pots. Hmm? Mtoro ya chumbagata, nandi kia chumbata, umkanag. Then you find a foreigner coming specifically to come and test the food. Sirim, how is it done? Ili nyanja, they go and they test this. How is it done traditionally? So I think I need to employ, or we need to employ the cultural institutions. Uh, to ensure that uh, they build up, they build up, they preserve these culture sites, the historical part of it that it is attached to a site. If you go to the crater lakes, we have over 50 crater lakes in Fort Porto, where we have the southern crater lakes which are part of the Kasenda uh, Crater Lake region. Then also the northern Crater Lakes. Or we have the, uh, this side of Nyakasura Hills. So we need to look into the historical part of it. How best can we attach the names of these uh, Crater Lakes into when you're packaging, when you're packaging the tourism product? How best can you attach the name? What is the meaning of uh, Lake Kigere? We need to attach the history about the Crater Lake so that when somebody is coming to experience this, all is uh, consuming the product, would have to reflect the historical part of it. What is behind? Uh, why was it named the Chigere? What is the history behind this? Mm -hmm. When you look at uh, Nyakasura, Mabere Ganyinamuiru, what is so special about Mabere Ganyinamuiru? In our next episodes, we shall be exploring and discovering what are the hidden treasures or the hidden meaning uh, behind these culture sites, the historical sites. I, uh, I am very thankful with the Uganda Tourism Board, the different tourism sectors or uh, the role, the sector players, like the Uganda Tourism, uh, Uganda Tour Operators, Uganda Wildlife Education Center, for doing whatever it takes. And the, the Wukota, the community uh, organization, for doing whatever it takes to preserve the culture and history of the people of Uganda. Of course, I also salute whoever is behind the preservation and marketing of the tourism sites in Uganda. Join us in our next episode as we discover more about ecotourism in Uganda. Mm -hmm.